he cares about everybody and everything, even if it's not perfect. Right. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. And when you're offering to him, he's he's looking at the heart. He's not looking at the offering or the tithe. He's looking at the heart of you want to do this and you want to do your best. Which is why he didn't get angry at the poor for not being able to give a lamb. Instead, they could give like a grain offering. Or turtle doves for the, you know, yeah. or, or something you could catch out in the field, a sparrow. God does not expect perfection. And I think that's really what the moral of these verses is, is God does not expect perfection, but he does want you to do your best. Right. He wants a perfect heart. Hey, faithful listener, grab your cup of coffee and experience the Bible in a way you never have before. P40 Ministries is a podcast that goes through the Bible cover to cover. It's an awesome narrative that focuses your mind and prepares your heart for God to speak. So join your host, Jen, for a biblical podcast that's hilarious, informative, imaginative, and fun. The P40 Ministries Podcast. Listen now as we go through the book of Leviticus. Hello and good morning, faithful listener, and thanks for tuning in to the very last episode of both season three and also of the P40 Ministries podcast, because don't forget, we are starting season four, and it's now going to be renamed the Bible Explained podcast as of next Wednesday. And also just to remind you guys, I'm going to be taking off Monday and Tuesday, this upcoming Monday and Tuesday, just to uh, have a little break and also just to make sure that everything goes well with the name change of the podcast and that that's all uh, set up. But today I actually have a special guest for the very last episode of Leviticus and this is my mom. So say hi mom. Hi. <laughs> all right mom tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I live close to Jen and um, I'm retired. Mm-hmm. That's about it. What else do you do? I like to study the Bible. Yeah. She's, and you write Bible studies. Once in a while here and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my mom enjoys her Bible studies and uh, she helps out with uh, the women at her church and just does different things there. So yeah. And what's your name? My name is Terry. I thought your name was mom. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> Therese, but I go by Terry. Yeah, Therese. But I, t I call her mom because that's her name to me. That's all she's allowed to call me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's true. Okay, so Leviticus 27 is going to be finished up today, and we're going to be talking about verses 28 through 34. So grab your Bible and your cup of coffee, and let's go ahead and read this. I'll be reading out of the WEB this morning. Notwithstanding, no devoted thing that a man devotes to Yahweh of all that he has, whether of man or animal, or of the field of his possession, shall be sold or redeemed. Everything that is permanently devoted is most holy to Yahweh. No one devoted to destruction who shall be devoted from among men shall be ransomed. He shall surely be put to death. All the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is Yahweh's. It is most holy to Yahweh. If a man redeems anything of his tithe, he shall add a fifth part to it. All the tithe of the herds or the flocks, whatever passes under the rod, the tenth shall be holy to Yahweh. He shall not examine whether it is good or bad, neither shall he exchange it. If he exchanges it at all, then both it and that for which it is exchanged shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments which Yahweh commanded Moses for the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. So yeah, that's the end of Leviticus. Kind of... Uh, interesting portion that I didn't really understand. So thankfully mom was here to help me <laughs> since mom has like the entire Bible practically memorized. Okay. Not true. <laughs> it is kind of true. So verses 28 and 29 are kind of the most hard to understand here. I would guess. I don't know. It's sort of weird. And so me and mom were having an argument before we got onto the, the podcast here and, uh, Oh, I'd like to call it a, debate. It was a discussion. It, it was an argumenting 
It was an argumental debate. <laughs> yes, but it was it was friendly. It was a friendly between a mom and a daughter. <laughs> yeah. But it was good. Yeah. So, mom, what do you think verse 29 means? Because this is where we were really having the most discussion is verse 29, which says, no one devoted to destruction who shall be devoted from among men shall be ransomed. He shall surely be put to death. And so me here, I'll I'll just state, I'll state my opinion first of what I thought this meant. So when I was reading this, I was like, okay, no one devoted to destruction. When I think of that, I think of a person who is just unwilling to listen to God. They devote themselves to destruction. And so that person who chooses to do that, it doesn't matter who it is. It could be a child. It could be a husband, a wife. If they're not following God's law and say they go out and like murder somebody, they should be put to death. They cannot be ransomed. They can't be like bought back, redeemed. So that's kind of what I thought this meant. But mom has a very, very, very different opinion as to what she thinks this means. So go ahead and state what you thought. Well, what I thought was, I thought that was kind of taken out of context because it says no one devoted to destruction who shall be devoted from among men. So I think it's talking about devoting them. And if you look at the word devoted in the Hebrew, it is put under the ban, accursed, or set apart or sanctified. So there's more than one meaning there. And so to me, the knowledge of scripture helps understand. And I think that's why the people needed the Levites to teach them because God taught us in his word. And Jesus Christ clearly states, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Which means when you take up a cross, it doesn't mean a burden. It means a death. It's like take up your electric chair or whatever, something that's going to cause you to die. It means you are dying to your life and dedicating it to Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, if you want to follow him, do this. I think he's referring to this when he's saying that. You want to follow me, you destroy anything in the flesh and come after me. And Paul backs it up also in Romans. So what does Paul say in Romans? Because we looked that verse up. So what's what's Romans say? It said, it was Romans 10, I think, and it says, um, you have to mortify the deeds of the flesh to live for God, to, mm-hmm. to kill the deeds of the flesh. And that's Jesus, even another verse, they just keep coming. It's like Jesus said, the flesh profits nothing. And so that's what I really think this verse, if you are going to devote yourself to God, you die to the world. Yeah. And so the the one area where I was not agreeing with mom, though, where it says he shall surely be put to death. That sounds to me like someone else is killing somebody. See, and I, I don't know. I'm having a hard time understanding mom's perspective here because it just looks like anyone devoted to destruction, which shall be devoted. F- I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I guess I can see both. Well, I do. I see he shall surely be put to death, but I really think the the New Testament explains that because when you start wanting, as I'm older, I'm, I'm older, I'm retired, and you start thinking more, the older you get, about your life with God. Whereas when I was younger, all I thought about was raising my kids, living my life. And that, I don't think, was a good focus. But God is so, so merciful, he waits. Well, it's waits. a good focus. Thankfully, you did think about no, raising me. <laughs> I mean, that was all I thought about. I'm just, Yeah, okay. Okay, it was a good focus, but what I'm saying is, is it wasn't like completely about God. And more, the older you get, the more your life is dedicated to God and you're kind of forgetting the world more. And it's when it's, I just really see it that way. I think that when he says you'll be put to death, you know, it means you're going to put to death the flesh. But I could be wrong. Well, That's- let's, okay, I have it in the WEB. So let's go look at it in the NLT. So just so everybody can hear us argue more. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, NLT version says, um, however, anything specially set apart for the Lord, whether a person, an animal, or a family, or property, must never be sold or bought back. Anything devoted in this way has been set apart as holy and it belongs to the Lord. No person specially set apart for destruction may be bought back. Such a person must be put to death. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess I could see it mom's way where a person who is devoted, because 
the word devoted, and I think I should give a little bit more context here, is like more intense than the word dedicate. And we've been seeing the word dedicate basically all throughout Leviticus 27, because all of this is talking about gifts offered to God, dedicated gifts. So that word dedicated kept coming up. So this is really the first time we see the word devoted. And so devoted, that particular word in the Hebrew has just a a stronger connotation. This is somebody that truly devotes themselves to God rather than just like dedicates themselves to God. So a person who devotes themselves has to be somebody who is, you know, living after God. Right. It's, there, it's like Christians. Yeah, there's no looking back. Yeah. You're not looking back. Yeah. So you can't look back. Once you devote yourself, sort of like the, the Christian walk, I suppose, actually, now that you mention it, I guess it could be. Because we just talked about that verse with Jesus saying to his disciples, take up your cross and follow me. Like we just talked about that. Like what was that last week? I and mean, when Jesus says that you become a Christian, you do have to devote your life to God. And uh, yeah, you can't, you do die to self, I guess. But And I also think that too, is if when Jesus also said, no man putting his hand at the plowshare and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. So it's like, if you walk away, you're probably going to die. You're going to be put to death. And maybe they literally did that if they decided that they devote, they were devoted or devoted themselves. And then they walked away. It was a, it was wrong. You cannot do that. And that's what God is saying. Like, think about it. It says in John that those that were of us, but they went out from us, they were never really of us. They are devoted to eternal destruction. Can they you, really are. Can you paraphrase that plowshare one? Paraphrase it in your own words. To me, if you are, you start to do something, you start working, okay, working for the Lord. To me is you look back like, what, what am I doing? You're not fit. You either do it, you put your big girl panties on and do it or you are <laughs> this was my mom's favorite saying to me all through me growing up just put your big girl panties on and just do it <laughs> yeah but it's kind of like that it's jesus is saying you either do it let your yes be yes your no be no don't look back yeah that's what i think that means yeah okay okay but honestly i i recommend you guys reading it yourselves and just, uh, you know, letting the Holy Spirit speak through it and just you read it and see what you think. So, yeah, verses 28 and 29 is just talking about somebody dead. No, not just dedicated, devoted to God. Yeah, this is definitely something more intense than dedication. But then in verses 30 through 34, it talks about tithing. And this is kind of I don't know if we talked about tithing before. I guess we did on occasion, but this is where it basically says the word tithe and talks about how you give 10% of your fruit. Like back in these days, this would be grain or fruit because they didn't, I don't know how much money they really had. But yeah, it would be like grain or fruit. They'd give 10% of it to God. It kind of says that the tithe is most holy and it does belong to God, but God does allow you to buy the tithe back. But it kind of makes no sense to do that. Like you can redeem your tithes to God, like say like, you give like fruit to God from your fruit garden, but you want to buy it back. Well, I'm looking at verse 33 and it says, but if you do exchange one animal for another, then both the original and its substitute will be considered holy. So I'm thinking that maybe you're like, you gave this lamb and you're like, oh man, I wish I would have given this lamb. So he's like, okay, then you give both. I yeah. think that's what I'm getting from that, but I could be wrong. Yeah, because you can. it didn't just have to be like fruit and vegetables. It could be animals. Like you could tithe an animal to God. And like we sort of talked about that before. Like when you dedicate an animal, you weren't supposed to exchange a bad one for a good one and vice versa. Yes. Because it's same here with the tithing. If you, you can't really exchange it, otherwise they're both just going to God. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no point. Yeah. And yeah. You know how the sacrifices that you gave to God were supposed to be like absolutely perfect or as perfect as an animal could get. These ones didn't have to be perfect. And that's pretty clear here. It, and I think it actually said, um, yeah. it, you can you can give the bad animals. You may, must not, you may not pick and choose between good and bad. Yeah, because it looks like you bring your flock and you start counting every 10. Oh, this one, every 10. And it's kind of like, those are the ones it's, it, you don't have them in any kind of order and that's what god is taking from you every one out of every 10 
but you're like he's saying you pass it under okay and you grab that one as as you count and so it doesn't matter if it's a good one or a bad one yeah so i think that makes it very easy so that you're not like like freaking i freaking out about yeah it. freaking yeah. out or looking like oh gee they have one gray hair i can't you know and yeah, i think yeah, god's yeah. so merciful it shows yeah, mercy well, yeah. oh yeah for sure and i'm sure people got really caught up with perfection and, and doing all this stuff when in actuality, the only place God expected as perfection, as perfect, you know, earthly perfection as you can get was with the sin sacrifices. Right. That was it. Nothing else, really. Right. Because the sin sacrifice that was pointing to Jesus. How, yes. How can you have something that's already yeah, you, ruined? Yeah. Pay for something that's ruined. The sin sacrifice did have to be more on the perfect side of life but when it came to any of the other free will offerings or tithes or anything everything belonged to god i would agree that people got pretty caught up in perfection and just and we see that that happened with the pharisees right yeah. and it can happen like nowadays like sometimes people like oh gee i got a 99 on my test i tried my hardest but i need a 102 i needed that extra credit point <laughs> And they freak out. And there's a lot of people. I was like that. So I, I I can understand why the mercy of God there. Yeah. Well, like yeah. It, you don't have to have it. You, you The mercy of God is just put, bring them over and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That one. And then do it again and again. And it was, well, you yeah. have to worry about it. And plus on top of that, that kind of shows that, you know, God just, he loves everybody. He cares about everybody and everything, even if it's not perfect. That's right. kind of what I'm trying to say. And when you're offering to him, he's he's looking at the heart. He's not looking at the sacrifice or the offering or the tithe. He's looking at the heart of you want to do this and you want to do your best. Which is why he didn't get angry at the poor for not being able to give a lamb. Instead, they could give like a grain offering. It wasn't there. A, or, there was a, or turtle doves for the, you know, yeah. or, or something you could catch out in the field, a sparrow or whatever. What was it? Turtle doves? Yeah, it's like turtle doves or sparrows yeah. or something. Yeah. God does not expect perfection. And I think that's really what the moral of these verses is, is God does not expect perfection, but he does want you to do your best. Right. He wants a perfect heart. Yeah. 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 As perfect as your heart can get. Yes. <laughs> like he wants he wants your best he wants the heart is, yes is really the moral of this story well actually when i was when i was homeschooling jen what did i always say you don't have to get doesn't matter the grade as long as i know you did your best even though she would say she was doing I her was best. Doing my best yeah i don't know about that yeah i was doing my best okay <laughs> To this day, I still say I was doing my best. My mom doesn't believe me. Well, that's because when I was uh, grading her uh, writing and it was like, <laughs> wow, okay. And then she'd write for her sister and it'd be like a novel. And I'm like, what? No, I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> because those writing prompts were stupid. I'm sorry. They were awful. And I had to do them like daily. I remember that. There was like these writing prompts that I'd have to do and I'd have to write a poem one day. And I'm just like, I don't want to write a poem today. <laughs> So, yeah. so but it I, wasn't your best. <laughs> so there you go. You, you just proved it. <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was boring. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, guys, this was my mom. So um, say goodbye to everybody, mom. Goodbye, everybody. And thanks for listening. You know what the, the saying is. <laughs> but okay. So everybody, don't forget Tuesday and uh, Monday next week, I'm going to be taking off. But Wednesday, we'll be back with season four. So I hope all of you guys uh, subscribe to the podcast to make sure that you don't lose it when the name change happens, even though you probably won't either way. But just go ahead and subscribe just to be on the safe side if you're a faithful listener. But uh, yeah, I'll see you back bright and early Wednesday morning for season four of the Bible Explained podcast. But until then, happy, happy listening, listening and God bless. And God bless. God bless.